Hello. Hello, welcome back. In this week's video, we're gonna talk you through our new bikes. We've had lots of questions on these. These are our new Carrera folding bikes. Stay tuned for a full fantastic review. So we've asked lots and lots of questions about these bikes and our videos. We took them to France. We bought them as a bit of a impulse buy just before we set off. So we're going to talk you through this review in a number of stages. I'm going to show you how they fold, obviously, how easy it is to do, how easy it is to rebuild them, how we found them. We'll share both of our knowledge on bikes. One of us is a bit more experienced than the other. Me, um, obviously. <laughs> and then we'll show you how we found them, using them. We've covered a lot of miles on them, which we'll also share with you as well. We'll share with you the cost, anything that went wrong, and what we think at the end, we'll give them our total fantastic review. So I'm gonna start with uh, my uh, experience of bikes, which as you may know, if you've watched any of our previous videos, technical stuff is not really my forte. I just don't really have the patience for it. I do like a bike, but I want it to be quite simple. I want to get on, ride it, change gears, brake, you know, have some, some features, but I don't need a million different brakes uh, and gears and fancy uh, equipment that you might get on some of them. Just a bike that works and is pretty idiot proof. So my experience of bikes is a little bit more than Caroline. Is if you watch our channel regularly, you'll know that I'm quite into mountain biking. I started off when I was 12, got my very first mountain bike and I was into mountain biking ever since. I had a bit of a bad crash when I was 17, ended up in hospital, stopped for about three years and then got the bug again. I've been riding ever since. Um, love mountain biking, it's one of my main hobbies. I've got a number of bikes, much to Caroline's disgust. She said I can only ride one at a time, but anybody who's into mountain biking, you know, you need different types for different disciplines. So I like to think I'm probably a, um, a hobbyist, somebody who knows a bit about bikes, quite a bit about bikes, but I'm not a professional or anything like that. So it's all my own personal opinion. One thing I must say is I'd never considered buying a bike from Halfords before, full stop. Um, without sounding snobby, most of the bikes I buy are from sort of specialist shops, specialist brands, Specialized being one of them. And you, you, so you know what you're looking for and you, it, it's not what you generally find in Halfords, but they've spent a lot of time and development in making good bikes. Uh, they started off with Voodoo bikes uh, quite a few years ago, mountain bikes and the Boardman range of bikes. And they've really come a long way. I've been really, really impressed by the quality of the bikes from Halfords. I never thought I'd hear myself say that, and there's probably quite a few people in here who are into mountain biking who think the same thing. But buying this from Halfords was a, was a revelation. I was really, really impressed with the service and also with the quality of the bike, which I'll talk you through shortly. So when we're traveling with the bikes, you can see we've got them in the back of the van. They fit really, really well. So these are in their bags, which we'll talk about later in the video because we bought them separately, they didn't come with the bikes. But they fit in the back of the van perfectly. Um, we wedge them in ever so slightly, so just tilt them on their side. You can see it sits in the in the gap between the two, and both of them are in the back of the van. So our, our van's a 6.4 meter. You can fit both bikes in quite comfortably. We can actually hit the barbecue in here as well uh, when we're on traveling. So you can see how nicely it fits. So how did you find the bike? Uh, great, really easy to use. Um, as you may have seen, we did upgrade the saddle on mine, which I was really pleased about. So that was a big plus. Um, I really like the bike. So easy to adjust the handlebars and the seat. So if I wanted to do that going along, I could actually do that myself, um, which was good. I really like the gears. I found the gears work really well. What I always struggle with riding a bike is that the gears never work as quickly or as noticeably as I would like. Um, and as soon as you shifted up or down in these, there was a noticeable change. We went up some quite steep hills. Um, and I'm, you know, considering the small wheels and my weak legs, it wasn't an issue because I felt the gears worked really well. Brakes were good. Um, yeah, I, 
A lot of the things that I would improve on this bike could be improved as added extras. So the bike as a whole, as a tool to get around for cycling, I, I have no complaints with. What would you have liked? I would have liked uh, mud guards, um, potentially um, some kind of <laughs> luggage rack, either on the back or a basket on the front. My other bike has a basket. Um, obviously we upgraded the saddle. I do like that it's got a stand. I always think that's a great thing on a bike. Um, but other than that, yeah, really just mud guards and some kind of luggage. There's a reason it doesn't have those and I'll explain when I do my bit. I I'm, sh I'm sure there is a reasonable explanation for that. Oh, another thing, water bottle carrier. But again, it's a folding bike, so I'm aware as perhaps why you can't get these things on it. So I was really impressed with the bike. Genuinely, from when I put it together, I got them and built them. They're very easy to build. Halfords offer a service, which I'll talk about in a, in a short while in the video. But I really, really was impressed with it. One of the biggest things for me on a folding bike is the stem. So when you've got the handlebars and you rock the bike backwards and forwards, there's a lot of give and play in the stem of the bike, which makes it feel, you know, <laughs> wobbly, uh, dangerous even. Tried loads of different folding bikes and this one's really solid, which is the main reason I went for this. It's got a really solid stem where it attaches on with the handlebars attach on. It's been really solid all the way around. It's got a nice chunky frame. It's got 20 inch wheels, which was a massive, massive thing for me. A lot of folding bikes have 16 inch wheels and they just look too small. I was worried I was look like a clown riding around on a clown bike, which is why we call them clown bikes in our videos. Um, it came with a lot of features on it, a standard again, which I'll touch on in a second when I talk about the video, but I was really impressed with the brakes, with the gears. Um, my bike's completely standard. I didn't change the saddle on mine. Um, it's got plenty of height and reach for me as well. I didn't find the bike was too cramped. And most of all, it folds up in seconds. You can fold it in, I think 30 seconds is equivalent time or 45 seconds, but it's even quicker than that. Literally three different parts of the bike which fold, which we'll show you in a second. So my bikes are the Carrera, I get this right, Intercity Disc 8-Speed Folding Bikes. There's two different types of bike like this. Um, so when you look on the Halfords website, just be careful. It's quite easy to, to get the right one because these are red and the other older models are a different colour. The older models don't seem to have the disc brakes. So they do this one with disc brakes. It's got uh, mechanical disc brakes on it. And they do a grey one, which is a bit more expensive. And that's got hydraulic disc brakes on. So disc brakes on a bike, um, generally hydraulic disc brakes are sort of the best you can get. They're the top of the range. You get them on high end mountain bikes and road bikes and they work like on hoft hydraulic fluid like on a car. This has got mechanical disc brakes, so similar process, but they work off a cable, so you have to adjust them a little bit more as you use them. And then you've got normal cantilever or U-brakes like on a traditional bike that presses blocks against the wheel. So these have got mechanical disc brakes, a really good value for money. The frame is completely aluminium, uh, also the forks, and it has 20 inch wheels as well, which is fantastic. Eight speed Shimano gears, the brakes are Tektro, which again are kind of entrance level on a, on a decent mountain bike range. Um, so they're quite a, they're quite a good uh, mountain bike brand of brakes, um, Tektro. So it's got some good components on it, not only the brakes and the Shimano gears and also the lightweight frame. Um, so it adds together into a really good package. One thing I'll say is the weight as well. The reason I went for this is because it's really, really lightweight. Halfords have actually changed their website. When I bought it, it was actually slightly less. Um, I'll double check and try and get some information on that. At the moment, it's showing it as 13 kilograms. So the bike weighs 13 kilos, which is about the same as a, you know, a mountain bike, um, a, a frame one. Obviously, battery bikes are a lot heavier. So really lightweight because the frame's aluminium. Really good components, brakes and, and uh, gears, all for the summary price of £375. If you have a bike to work scheme from Halford, you can get it cheaper as well. Just a little tip there too. Um, and something else that Halfords offer, we didn't take advantage of it because we were in a hurry. We bought them just before we went away. Um, and I've got a bit of um, experience of building bikes. Halfords will build it for you and put it together for £10, which I think is really good value. Because they'll put it together for you, they'll check it, they'll make sure everything needs, anything needs adjusting, they adjust. So when we got ours, um, Caroline's was fine straight out the box. Mine had to adjust the brakes on it. Um, so if you don't know what you're doing, it's really worth it for £10 to get Halfords to build, it for build, to build it for you. That's really good value. But in terms of the spec, components and the weight, I really, really can't fault it. So as I said, there is another model, and I was really tempted to go for this. A, because I didn't want to have the same colour bikes, um, but also B, because it's got hydraulic discs. So the next model up is the Carrera Intercity Disc 9 speed folding bike. So it's got one extra gear. The main difference is it's got hydraulic discs on it, which are less maintenance. They're so just a bit easier to use and it was quite a nice grey colour. It wasn't quite as striking as the red, but it's grey. Again, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see it. 
but it was 450 pounds, so it's 75 pounds more. And what put me off were the tires were really, really thin. These are relatively you know, wide for a sort of road bias type, a bike, um, but these ones on this slightly more expensive model, a little bit thinner. So that's what put me off and made me stick with this one. And I think the red looks really nice as well. We both like the red and we couldn't decide who was gonna get it. So we both bought the same bike. So when we started off looking at building bikes, we looked at all sorts. We tried Decathlon, we looked at Brompton. Decathlon bikes were a good price, but they didn't feel as well built, particularly on the stem, as I said earlier, they didn't seem as well, quite as robust. Brompton bikes, for anybody who's into bikes, they're really expensive. They sort of start at about 850 and they go up to sort of 1500 pounds or more, and you can add loads of extras to them. They're really good build quality, but they're really quite expensive. And that's what we were looking for. We weren't looking for something really expensive. We wanted something to try and fit that sort of just grab and go. So Caroline's going to try and film me now while I fold the bike. We're not going to do it as a time lapse. We're going to do it in real time so you can see how quick it is. As I say, it's really, really quite quick. It's just three elements to it. Well, five if you include the pedals. So Caroline's going to try and film me now while I do it. Real time. Let's go. First of all, really simple. Fold the handlebars. There's a catch on the handlebars. You pull it down and they drop down to the side. Then the seat. Drop the seat down like that. It's a quick release. You can see. And then finally, the frame itself literally folds in half and then it sticks together with magnets and that's it done you can also fold in the pedals they literally just push in and fold in like that as well so that's completely folded and that's how quick it is so i didn't time me that doing that but you can see from the video how long it took and the bike is nice and compact and easy to carry and you put it into a bag which we'll talk about now The bag. So one thing that I say is essential for a folding bike is a bag. And they don't come with them. Most folding bikes don't come with bags, we've realized. And Halfords actually had one, which was 20 pounds. But in our haste to buy the bikes, we didn't see them. We didn't think about them until we got them home. And by then it was too late. So I had to order these as emergency delivery from Amazon. We bought one each. I got a green one, Caroline got a black one. So you can see them in the van from the footage earlier. And they fold up with this neat little bag like this. Um, they unfold. And then you literally can just, when the bike's folded up, you can just wrap it inside, it zips up perfectly. They cost 30 pounds each. So that's an additional expense. I'd say it was definitely a necessity, but it's a really nice little waterproof, dirt proof bag. They kept the bikes inside absolutely immaculately. I was really bothered about protecting the inside of the camper van, making sure I didn't touch anything. And um, when this is inside this bag, it's just like any of the luggage. It's really, really good. So highly recommended. But I think the Halfords bag would have probably been done just as good. And it would say 20 pounds. These were 30. They're a uh, Rhino something. I'll put a link in the description. So what went wrong while we had them? Well, as I say, they were really, really good. Um, we put them together just before we went away. Caroline's bike was perfect. We changed the saddle on Caroline's bike. It's really easy to do to change the saddle. All you do is remove it from the, the stem, the post, and then there's just two bolts you loosen on the bottom. Uh, it might be four, I can't remember. And then you can just slide the seat off and put a new one on. So that was a good upgrade. There was only one thing really that went wrong on the bikes. It wasn't, didn't go wrong. It just required a bit of adjustment as was going along. And of course, I forgot my multi-tool, uh, which is embarrassing. But in France, because so many people are into bikes and stuff, we just stopped at the supermarket. I bought this one for a couple of pounds, a little multi-tool, it's perfect. And I'll show you the reason we bought this. So if you remember when you were younger and you sometimes have your handlebars twisted the wrong way around and your dad had to come and straighten them for you by putting your, between his legs and then straighten them up. That's what kept happening to them at the start because I hadn't tightened the stem quite enough. I was a little bit scared of over tightening it. So all I did was have to stop realign them and then just tighten the stem so i'll show you exactly what i mean so if i shut knock them out of proportion if caroline can try and film me pointing down so i'll show what i mean so can you see handlebars are pointing that way the wheels pointing that way so you can see like you used to when you were when you were younger on your bike so to fix it all to do is straighten it up so it's perfectly straight like that and then quite simply fold the stem down and inside if you can bring the camera over here so there's a there's a st the stem bolt is just there there's a five mil nut on it just literally tighten it you can see it's loose there so all you do is tighten that up and that's it then nipped into place and then back in folded done 
So, our final verdict on the bikes. Well, I've been really impressed. What do you think? Yeah, I've been really impressed. As I said, I could improve it with a couple of things, but that's no reflection on the bike. That's just personal, personal choice. The other models did come, so the models without disc brakes did come with mud guards and the, the luggage carry on the back. You can also add a, a bottle cage. They have got the, the holes for a bottle cage to be added to it quite easily. And you can add, buy the mud guards and add them separately if you wanted to. But I think they look much better without them. I think it's, the bikes and mud guards look a bit I was just worried in case it was really rainy and we were going to get soaked, you know, we're using them a lot, but as, as you will have seen, we didn't have that issue, so all was well. And I'll probably buy some plastic clip-on mud guards as well, they're just easy to take on and off too. So yeah, for me, absolutely fantastic, really impressed. So much so, we're going to keep them. We're not going to have the tow bar fitted to the, to the van at the moment and uh, not going to buy a bike rack for it, which we planned to do originally. Been so impressed with these, we're going to carry on using them. Um, been quite happy to jump on them and use them for a short commute. Um, they don't seem embarrassing as a folding bike some folding bikes look a little bit out of proportion but a lot of people came up to us and said oh i really like your bikes they're really nice you saw like the youngsters looking at them because of the, the colors and stuff a lot got a lot of attention from people as well which is also, also quite interesting it's just because we look so good in matching bikes <laughs> <laughs> yeah sad <laughs> uh, but no really really impressed so fantastic rating five, five. <laughs> absolutely really really impressed value for money aluminium folding bike really lightweight Falls down to a small compact size, fits into a bag nicely, into the back of our van, no trouble whatsoever, really, really good indeed. And we did leave them outside overnight when we went, we were not using them, we just locked them to the van. Um, usually it was parked under a tree or something, so it was sheltered as well. But again, you could get covers from if you were bothered about leaving them outside. And when we were traveling, we just put them inside the van, which was really neat. Uh, nothing hanging off the back of the van. No, I think what was really good about these is that, uh, as you've seen, we put them um, in a row. So when we stayed um, overnight for so like the first pitch at the, the ferry pitch before we went off early, we, we didn't need to take them out of the van. Uh, you could still open the fridge and yet we didn't sit down that end, obviously, because the bikes were in the middle, but we had the whole rest of the van because we were sleeping upstairs in the dinette to sit and use the van as normal, leaving them inside without any, you know, without it sort of encroaching on your van space. Yes, which is really good again. So they fit nice inside the van they'd fit quite easily in the boot of a, of a decent sized car as well so you can take them with you for days out um, the other thing as well with them is the, the sort of suitability in terms of riding height so they seat up to six foot three i mean generally the seat drops right down low so you can use it for you know relatively short person up to somebody six foot three i'm six foot one six foot two i was fine on the bike absolutely fine with it the weight is the other thing as well now i think helpers need to perhaps someone just sold themselves a little bit with this um, i've checked the frame there's no cracks or anything like that in it and <laughs> um, this the weight limit is supposed to be the 15 7 including luggage 15 stone 15 stone 7 yeah i was 15 stone 11 when we set off on the trip um and the bike was absolutely Ooh, fine i'm so. not divulging how heavy i was but i wasn't that heavy <laughs> uh, so yeah normally normally try and sit about 15 stone but i put a bit of weight on so 15 stone 11 no issues at all with bike i think helfords have undersold themselves a little bit they've got a generic statement on their website about folding bikes weight limit which i think is wrong i think these are a lot more stable so yeah really impressed and just one thing I forgot to mention as well, the, the stem's adjustable in height too. So not just the seat's adjustable in height, the stem's adjustable. It only adjusts a couple of inches, but it just gives you a little bit more reach um, if you're a little bit taller. Uh, the gears have a gear indicator on them as well. And it also comes with a <coughs> bell too, like old bikes and uh, reflectors too. It's part of the legal, legal requirements for the UK. So yeah, really hope you've enjoyed this video. We've really enjoyed these bikes, highly recommend them. And hopefully you'll see lots more of them in our videos. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.